So, do you want to introduce yourself first of all for me, please? Yes, my name is Benson Muchero Kihomba. Uh, I'm an IT second line engineer here at the NHS. Right, I'm, I'm Mavis Francis, I'm the Voluntary Services Coordinator for the Trust. And I've been an employee of the NHS for over 30 years. So, I'm Susan Douglas, I'm an ENT consultant and Deputy Medical Director in Rotherham. Uh, hi, my name's Ivor James, um, I'm the Head of Facilities here at Rotherham General Hospital. So tell us a little bit about your background and heritage. Right, my um, heritage is um, I'm of Jamaican descent. My parents um, are Jamaican. Um, they were born, um, my father was born in um, Brandon Hill, at St Andrews in Jamaica, and my mum, Mount Moriah in St Anne's in Jamaica. My parents came over in the early 50s. Um, my father came over first. Uh, and then he sent for my mum a couple of years later. My father arrived um, in London and stayed one night in London and then um, migrated to uh, Worksop, Nottinghamshire. Um, and then when my mum came over, she joined him there and uh, they got married and um, then moved to Doncaster. Yes, um, happy to share. Um, my background is uh, mixed heritage, so I have uh, a Jamaican background uh, mixed with uh, Kenya. So my father is of Jamaican descent. He was born in 1932 in Maypen, which is a small village in Clarendon, uh, Jamaica. So I'm originally from Jamaica. I grew up in Jamaica. I went to medical school there. And then I started my ENT training there and I came to the UK on a Commonwealth scholarship to study for a year. And when was that then? When did you come over? That was in 1999. 1999. Wow, oh, okay. And where, where in Jamaica are you from originally? So I'm from Portmore, which is about half an hour outside of Kingston. Kingston is the capital. So um, I'm second generation um, Caribbean. My parents both um, immigrated over here. My dad immigrated from Jamaica in the 1950s and my mum immigrated over here in the 1960s. He came over in 1954, so uh, he would have been roughly around 20 years of age, uh, around about 20, 21 years of age. And uh, he came through by the route of Bristol, so he actually landed uh, on Bristol uh, Harbour. Uh, which was one of the three or four locations that the Windrush generation arrived in. Uh, there was somewhere arrived in Tilbridges in Essex, which was a, a, an extra uh, week of travelling on the ship. Uh, but he was lucky enough to land at Bristol, which he says that he he, he suffered terribly from seasickness. <laughs> so uh, it was quite a tough journey for him to get there. He does mention that when he arrived uh, in uh, Bristol, which was uh, on the 10th of November, I remember that because it's two days after my birthday, uh, 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 1982. But uh, when he arrived, it was in the winter, and uh, he wasn't prepared for the weather. He actually arrived with a smart shirt, tie, and suit, uh, and uh, off uh, from stepping off that ship, he it was a really, really big shock. Here, he said it was really cold. His fingers went instantly numb, and it was raining. I can't forget that he kept on complain about how much it rained. <laughs> I come from a country that is sunny, where you can always go to the beach, where life is very different, the food is very different. And and I remember one of my professors when I said I was going to come to the, U the UK, he told me about the sky being grey a lot. Yeah, it was a, a culture shock. You know, they've come from glorious sunshine, you know, to a grey, dismal, um, grey, um, so like you know atmosphere and they weren't used to it um, but they soon adjusted and uh, you know my mum had a big part in it she she actually worked in the NHS for over 30 years what did your mum do uh, my mum was actually a child protection nurse she was actually a, a, a child she specialized in ch children and she was actually a NHS nurse for child protection and uh, she used to do children safeguarding and from her years within the NHS, she did say, oh son, why don't you think of joining the NHS like I did? Uh, so uh, it was beautiful because that's now two generations uh, of our family working within the NHS. And uh, if it weren't for my mom, uh, I'll be honest, I probably wouldn't be here. 
because she kind of inspired me to join the NHS, you know, give back to this uh, wonderful country and uh, community that we were raised in. Uh, my mum always had a strong feeling of giving back, uh, of service, similar to my dad. My father was a miner and uh, my two brothers, he said to them, please do not follow me down the mines, you know, do something else. And, you know, the same message was for my daughter. I didn't steer her towards the NHS, that's where she went. She thoroughly enjoys it, you know, thoroughly enjoys it. Um, she's worked previously at Pinderfields in Wakefield for 17 years. Career. So I started, so I started my placement as a, what we'd consider an SHO grade, so junior doctor working and doing some research. And that was with Professor Watson in Newcastle. And then I started as a local, moved to a local registrar post. And then I got onto the training program in Nottingham. So I did Nottingham, Derby, Leicester, and then finished the training program, but also did a, a year's fellowship on cochlear implant. So I spent a year in Australia and my, so I was in Sydney, my husband was in Adelaide. Our first daughter was born in Adelaide. And then uh, we came back, I finished my training. Then I went to, in, went to work to Bristol to work as a local consultant in ENT. Well, so my mum, she was midwife, um, registered nurse, and then she decided to move into health visiting. And she did health visiting until uh, she retired. And my dad worked in the civil service. No idea what he did, just though it was somewhere in Whitehall. Um, that's all I know. <laughs> so my dad passed away in 2010, but he was, you know, he was happy that I was giving back and, you know, doing something, I guess, worthwhile. And uh, my mum, yeah, proud of me. Uh, they've been great contributors to the NHS. You know, as I said before, they've um, laid a firm foundation for us to be able to come forward and to be employed in the NHS. And I'm hoping that the legacy of um, enabling um, you know younger generations you know to come forward and and to do the same. From the feeling for, uh, I got from my mum specifically about the NHS and, and, and the generation of Windrush is um, they they had a really strong affinity to contributing. They never wanted to be labelled as freeloaders or people who. Uh, were coming for opportunities other than giving back. Uh, you know, the premise that my dad came over to this country was to help the Queen and rebuild our country. There are lots of countries all over the world that people come from to work within the UK, and particularly to work within the NHS, and that just helps us to be more diverse, to understand people from different countries mm. and the contributions that they give. I think growing up in Jamaica, this was always seen as, you know, something positive. You could go and work in another country, you could contribute to the economy there, contribute to patient care there. Um, we know that Britain or the Empire went out after World War II and wanted to rebuild and wanted to um, basically call, um, request help from um, other countries, um, from the Commonwealth as it were. And, you know, my parents are those of a generation of their generation, they were really proud to come and help the motherland, um, and it was obviously they've come here and it's it was different from how they expected. But I think the most important thing for a lot of people to um, know is that it's like that poem that says, "You called, we came," and we were actually asked to come here. I think a lot of people need um, it helps if a lot of people remember that. If we had this conversation again in five, ten years' time, yes. fifteen years' time, yes. what would your hopes be yes. for the future yes. for people from the Windrush generation and yes. beyond? Yes, uh, very good question there. Um, I mean, seeing what we've gone through in the last 75 years, um, I'm hoping for the next five or ten years to possibly see people of the Windrush generation sort of um, recognise a bit more than they are. Um, we need to be out there uh, talking about Windrush and the um, cultural changes that have happened because uh, of our parents and generations prior to that coming to the UK and the input that, that they've had in the NHS. It's important 
Um, they came at the very start of the NHS. Uh, they faced a lot of prejudice and racism, but they still soldiered on, and that's formed the foundation for us to be employed within the NHS. It would be nice to see more of these children, more people from this generation, or children of people from the Windrush generation, uh, 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 rise to um, job roles that are of significance, job roles and positions that can influence people for the better. So I'd like for, I think what I'd like to see is um, a workforce that reflects the local community. Um, it, I don't believe we should all be, whether it be all male or female, um, all black or white, you know, so, but something that reflects local community and where people feel that they can get to the top um, by hard work, not through who they know or um, colour of their skin, for example, or if, you know, religion or anything like that. Just a meritocracy where people literally um, are able to succeed through hard work. At my band in a senior level, you know, just good to, one to make a positive impression and to, um, yeah, provide a good, a good, good impression, good impact, so that those following um, can. Yeah, basically, so I can be a good example for those uh, behind me and kind of see if I can open doors. Um, I've had, you know, people help me, assist me, and if I can do that to others or inspire them in some way and let them know that there isn't a glass ceiling, then, you know, that'd be great. So I would hope that it would be quite a positive outlook on their contribution. So I think it's really positive in the sense that. People came from other countries and there are lots of countries all over the world that people come from to work within the UK and particularly to work within the NHS. And that just helps us to be more diverse, to understand people from different countries and the contributions that they give. Tell me about the value of equity in all parts of the NHS and all parts of any organisation. The value is that when people come to use our services, that they feel as though they belong. Seeing people that look like you, seeing people that represent you, it's important. And having familiar things around you, you know, especially language, um, cultural aspects, it's important. It's that they, these people of culture have got special skills that can be utilised even more. They carry resilience, they carry um, endeavour, and they carry hope that I don't think that people haven't been through this sort of experience would have uh, so I think that is such a really empowering, empowering. and uh, looking back now and looking at the NHS how it looks it's a face of diversity it, I find that uh, the diversity and the mixture of different cultures within the NHS makes it what it is today uh, without the different uh, cultures the different opinions the different skills that all these different cultures bring uh, it really makes us special and I don't think there's any other organisation out there, especially in the world, that has such a huge uh, mix of culture and uh, I'm really glad my mum actually pointed me in this direction because uh, I wouldn't have a career, I wouldn't have uh, you know, the job security and I wouldn't have that sense of giving back that gives me a reward every day. You know. This is Great Britain, it's a country where people from all over the world come and you know, growing up in London I saw the best of it, so you saw everyone growing up together. There were some there was there were some forms of racism but not that much because everyone grew up with each other so that you learn to um, appreciate everything that all different cultures um, had to bring. So it's like one big melting pot. I guess this is as we grow together we learn more from each other and we find out that there's more we've got more in common than what separates us.